Well, why don't we why don't we start uh, with uh, the experiment which I promised uh, um, to to see what uh, what is the effect of balancing and what happens if if uh, uh, the wheel is unbalanced? I need a strong volunteer. Can you be a volunteer? Yes. Yeah, so <coughs> now. Uh, why don't you face this okay. the, the class and now he is going to be the car body and we will see what will happen to him if uh, depending on this what is the problem with balance is it statically unbalanced or dynamically unbalanced well right now it is approximately balanced so <coughs> uh, so now when it when it turns he is capable of holding it really uh, pretty still uh, now, th uh, all of you think what ha what's happening, uh, what kind of, uh, how does he have to interact with the wheel now? Uh, uh, s both. Consider what torque he applies and what force he has to apply. Why don't we actually uh, let you rest a little bit because, I mean, this will be still <laughs> uh, uh, tiring. So, uh, co talk to each other now, figure out what was the, what force he applied on it and what torque he had to apply it consult with each other. Now remember that the wheel is a body. Think about it that it's a body. Don't think that it's a particle. <coughs> so talk to each other and in the meantime I'm going to make preparation for the <coughs> next situation. <coughs> Uh, can you maybe help me with this? Mm. So why don't you hold that? Okay. So let's start with this, what kind of force he had to apply. And why? Yeah, let's start with this, uh, with the translational motion. What was the translational motion of the, uh, of the wheel? How did it move? It didn't. Yeah, translational motion is associated with the motion of the center of mass. So uh, when it was turn just turning, and he held it still, center of mass did not move at all. Which means that in an inertial reference frame of this classroom, what was the net force required on the wheel? How the net force was supposed to be zero. The net force exerted on the wheel was supposed to be zero. Well, so actually he had to apply over here half of the weight and half of the weight here, upward, right? And that force was constant. It's pretty easy to adjust muscle to, to, uh, to, uh, to maintain constant force. Now, look at the wheel now. I attach two weights over here. Uh, uh, and, well, so I ruined the wheel. What did I ruin about the wheel? I shifted the center of mass. So now the center of mass is not at the center of the axle, but it's between the axle and those weights. It's shifted toward, toward those. So now when the wheel turns, how the, uh, how, what, describe the translational motion of that object. 
So now it is going to, to move around the axle. Center of mass is going to move uh, uh, around the axle. Uh, well, uh, along a circle, right? So what will be the net force exerted on the, uh, on the wheel? It will be varying, right? So if the, if the weights are here, he will have to push downward a little bit stronger than the, wa than the weight. I mean, uh, he, uh, sorry, he will have to apply force less than weight, yeah, because then the weight will, ax I mean, the net force will be down. When, when the weights are here, well, center of mass is going to accelerate toward him, which means that he will have to pull it over here. He will have to uh, lift it stronger than the weight. When it's over here, he will have to, he will have to push it. Right, so he will apply now. He will have to apply now a variable force because of the translational motion. Now let's think about rotational motion. So let's start with the situation when the wheel was balanced. So it didn't have the weight. Uh, <coughs> what kind of torque would have he? T uh, what, uh, he would have to apply zero. Why? Because if the wheel was when the wheel was balanced, it was a perfectly symmetrical object. It was uh, about the axis of rotation, which means that what cancelled out? Nothing cancelled out, actually. I mean, the forces cancelled out because, and we will see why. In what, uh, well, no, uh, uh, and there won't be angular. Uh, yeah, I, I heard here that there was no angular acceleration. Now there won't be angular acceleration either. He is going also to turn with a constant velocity. Problem is not angular acceleration, but angular momentum. Newton's second law refers to angular momentum. Remember that angular acceleration, we think about this angular acceleration only when uh, uh, when we have an object, so angular momentum is along angular velocity. Otherwise, we are interested not in angular acceleration, but angular momentum. So, when the wheel was balanced, angular momentum was in the same direction as angular velocity, and it was constant. When, he was when the wheel was turning, angular momentum was constant. If angular momentum was constant, what can you say about the torque? then the torque was zero. The net external torque w had to be zero. Now, uh, gravitation, uh, estimate quickly gravitational torque. And for simplicity, consider about the center of mass. So torque about the center of mass on the wheel, gravitational torque about the center of mass was zero because? <coughs> because what? Because the center of mass happens to overlap with, uh, with center of gravity, correct. Now, posi so position of center of gravity with respect to, position, uh, to center of mass was a zero vector. So gravitational torque was zero. Uh, well, what about the other torques? The torque exerted by the right hand. What was the direction of the torque exerted by the right hand? Uh, force was up, yeah, force was up, so torque was that way, correct. Uh, how about torque exerted by the left hand? This way, right? And, well, the lever arms are equal. Uh, I mean, we saw it, that it was equal, so, so we, we, we can see that symmetry is equal. Now, uh, the forces were also equal uh, in magnitudes, so the two torques were opposite. The two torques cancel each other out, so the uh, uh, resultant torque was uh, uh, zero. Now, <coughs> let's think what is going to happen with the angular momentum if I, if I put these two weights at the, uh, on both sides of the wheel. How angular momentum now is related to uh, angular velocity? Uh, why don't I draw it? Uh, how about the front view? 
and we are thinking about angular momentum about this point. So this wheel, <coughs> this part produces angular, results in angular momentum parallel to angular velocity, right? Now, I attach a piece over here. How it contributes to total angular momentum of the system. Now, position vector is over here. Can you see that? When the wheel turns this way, momentum is toward us, right? So here is position vector, momentum vector. Angular momentum of that piece is slightly upward, like that. Do you see that? So uh, I have to add it over here. And angular momentum is therefore slightly up due to this piece. Now I put another piece over here, symmetrically. Uh, so position vector is like that. Momentum is toward us. So angular momentum is slightly downward. Right? I have to add another vector over here. So we still have angular momentum along axis uh, of rotation, which means that what, what uh, kind of torque is needed to keep it uh, rotating? How much? Zero. Correct. All right. Let's see now how is he going to how the car's body is going to take care of the <laughs> isn't it neat? I mean this is what the car is going to do however notice that it, it's moving up and down right okay now let me put on the brake, put on the brake. and <laughs> yes yeah, so, so right now Problem was with the fact that center of mass was not on the axle. I'm going now to put the center of mass on the axle. However, I'll make I'll make uh, angular momentum not parallel to angular velocity. So what I'm going to do now is I'll put that wheel over. I mean, that weight over here. Uh, why don't you figure out, in this, at this instant, how angular momentum is related to angular velocity. So let's say angular velocity is in this direction. Talk to each other. In the meantime, when I'm, I, I'm preparing it, I want you to talk to each other and figure out what will, what will be the orientation of angular momentum. Can you help me again? Think also about the center of mass. Is the center of mass still on the axle? So is the center of mass still on the axle? Yes. Yeah, from the symmetry of the body, we see that the center of mass still is there. Uh, OK, thanks. Uh -huh. Well, how about angular momentum? So let's <coughs> figure out what's the contribution of this piece to angular momentum. Well, position vector is like that. Momentum is like that. So it is slightly upward, right? Now for this one, momentum is in, right? Position is here. So how about if I mark it here? And also like that, right? So 
now angular momentum of the wheel is not parallel to to the to the axis and <coughs> consistently with this drawing angular momentum is going to be like that right so as the wheel turns well angular momentum moves along a cone do you see that angular momentum is not constant anymore even if when angular velocity is constant well if angular momentum is not constant what does it mean on the body of the car it has to apply torque all the time right and <laughs> so for example if right now angular momentum as the wheel turns this way angular momentum changes from this to this right so the change is in this direction which means that he has to apply a torque in this direction how, how does he apply a torque in this direction he has to well torque in this direction it means that he's trying to twist the wheel which way no that way yeah that way so how how does he do it he's trying to not that way he's trying to do it this way yet yeah, right hand rule you're yeah, using right hand rule so he is going to twist it that way yes yeah, so when the in this configuration he will be trying to twist it this way now in this configuration torque is uh, sorry angular momentum is in this direction changes downward so now he's trying to twist it torque downward right which means that way yes yeah, so so now he <coughs> he will have to adjust the muscles to do it let's see what what how, what effect it is going to have on him <coughs> yes yeah, so hold it still can you see what he is doing he is pretty strong though <laughs> Yeah, but, but, but look at that, 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 he is doing it like that. Yeah, because, I mean, he is adjusting his muscle to, to, to hold it still, applying the torque, which I, which I said. I mean, he is going to try to do it like that. Uh, all right, let's now mess it up completely. <coughs> and how about, hold on. Now what is he going to do? Yes, now he will have to take care of the, of the torque and of, sin of, uh, of the force. I mean, I hope that... Uh, so let's turn it faster. So. Can you feel that you are doing both? Mm -hmm. All right, let's stop it. Okay, thanks. <coughs> so now balancing the wheels for you is crystal clear right you understand what is the purpose of it uh, well uh, now we have I want uh, to to bring up this is the last version of Newton's second law in our course I'm sorry <laughs> Uh, actually, it is not uh, a precisely new version. It is just uh, a detail from the previous version. Um, what happens if we, if we have a situation that an object is not rotating freely, but it is mounted on an axle? Well, if it is <coughs> mounted on the, on the axle, the axle takes care of, the, of part of the torque always. Now, like, over, like over here, it is if the if the if I make this object to rotate, then really and, and the axle is fixed, or even or even if it isn't fixed but it is instantaneous axle axis of rotation over there, but it's clear what is the axis of rotation, then we don't really have to analyze entire motion, we can just concentrate on the motion about that axis, about the axis of rotation. So uh, what, uh, uh, well, all that wobbling 
and, and uh, motion of the center of mass is taken care by the axle. So the only free uh, direction is the axial direction of angular momentum and axial uh, d uh, direction of torque. These will really affect the motion of the, uh, of the object. So let's think that we have a disk which rotates, not necessarily balanced disk, it doesn't matter. Uh, but it is on an axis. Let's say now that we apply a force somewhere over there. So if we apply force over there, well, there will be torque associated with that force, right? Position and the torque will be like this. It's not going to be along the axis. However, horizontal components of the yeah, because now immediately, if I apply, or if I take, think about it, and I push it, for, for example, downward, and this axis is, is fixed, then axis, the axle will immediately apply a reaction torque to balance a horizontal component of, of my torque. I, my contribution to the motion, or my influence on the motion will result only from the component of the torque along uh, in the direction in which the axis, axle cannot exert a torque. And think about it, in which direction axle cannot exert a torque. Yeah, so for example, why don't you, can you help me again? <coughs> Just uh, hold from both sides so it's easier. Can he apply torque, can he uh, through the axle apply torque in that way? So this is really a torque exerted by the axle. Can he apply torque in, that, in this direction? Apply torque in this direction. Yeah, hurry up. No, this is not, this isn't the torque in this direction. Apply torque in this direction. Tell him how to do it. Yeah, because I know that the right hand rule is pretty confusing. I'm telling you this direction, and, and you think, what the hell is this direction now? How has, has he to push? Yes, very good. Show him how to do that. That way, correct. This was torque in this direction, correct. Apply torque this direction. Good. How about that direction? Oh, that this direction? No. <laughs> Correct. It was torque up. Now t apply torque down. Correct. This was torque down. Yes. So through the axle. Now, how about apply torque this direction? Aha! There is no way he can apply torque on the wheel now. Right? Yes, yeah, so, so axle is incapable of applying torque that direction. How about this one? It is not able to apply torque in this direction as well. Right? So, thanks. Uh, axle applies torque only in the plane of that, of that object. It cannot apply torque in the other direction. Oh, uh, now, uh, come for a moment here. All right, now think about what, will ha what, what kind of torque he can balance, uh, I mean, I'm going to apply a torque and, and, and you tell me if he can apply, uh, he can uh, counteract and balance my torque or not. I'm going to apply torque up, right, which means I'm going to push it this way. Can he balance it? Yes, which way, which way does he apply torque? Now, wrong. <laughs> Down, <laughs> yeah. Think with right hand rule. I mean, I know that it's, it's hard. You still think about force, yeah, because I, I saw that since I apply force here, you think that he has to balance the force. He did balance the force, by the way, because center of mass did not move, right? So indeed, a reaction to my force was that he immediately applied force in this direction, so the net force was zero. But my question was about the torque. And when I push it that way, which way I'm applying torque? Up. Correct. So he, in order to balance, he had to apply torque down, which means he was twisting it this way. All right. So he was able to, uh, to react to my vertical torque. How about to my uh, downward torque? I'm going to push it toward me. So now the direction of my torque is down and his up. Is he able to do it? Yes. All right. Now, how about if I apply torque uh, uh, to the left? What should I do to the wheel? I should, push, I should push down here. 
well balance it. He cannot. Do you see that? He cannot balance actual torque. Thanks. <coughs> yeah, so if we look at this situation over here, the axle also cannot balance the actual uh, component of the torque. Well, so let's take a look now at uh, <coughs> what will happen. The, uh, this will result in angular acceleration of the wheel. Obviously, that angular ac velocity and angular acceleration have to be along the axle. This is how the object is capable to, to rotate only. So, uh, um, <coughs> if I look at the uh, previous version, I had angular, uh, uh, moment of inertia <laughs> multiplied by angular acceleration. This time, I wrote here angular momentum. Yeah, I had an arrow in the previous version. In this version, I don't have an arrow. Now, by this alpha, I mean the actual component. So this is actual component of acceleration. I could, I could write alpha sub z, for example. Uh, I can also think about magnitude uh, over here. Uh, because if the other two components of a zero of a vector a zero, then component is uh, is related directly to magnitude. Magnitude is equal to absolute value of the component in this situation. Uh, so moment of inertia multiplied by angular uh, com uh, component of angular acceleration, and and consistently angular acceleration over here is just component of angular vel uh, rate of change in component of angular velocity. So I wrote it that way. And, <coughs> well, uh, moment of inertia about that axis multiplied by component of angular velocity happens to be component of angular momentum. And rate of change of a component of angular momentum will be therefore equal to the which torque? Net external torque, but not net external torque. A component cannot be related to a vector, to entire vector. A component is related to a component, yeah, because really what we are doing is In general, we have that rate of change of angular momentum is equal to uh, net external torque. Now I'm taking only z component of it. So how is it related to, to this? Z component of the net torque, correct. I have to take z component. So what you what you I'm glad that you recognize that it is related to the torque, but it's not related to to the entire torque. Which uh, uh, well, actually it is because uh, in principle it is uh, because uh, the axle will take care of balancing uh, uh, components of the torque which are in plane in plane of that object. So, so, in principle, you are right. However, I want you to notice that you don't have to, to analyze entire torque. Consider just the appropriate component of the torque. Which component? Well, that, that omega uh, identifies the component. It says, actually, what is which, direct, uh, which, which, which component. So which component are we considering here? Z component, right. Now, why did I put omega rather than z? Yeah, because, <coughs> because uh, traditionally z is uh, a vertical, vertical compound. Now, ha if I have a, a wheel rotating like that, uh, or even like that, right now in this coordinate system, which you would uh, traditionally think, uh, all three components are non-zero, right? Do you see that? So rather than thinking about x, y, and z in the, in the way you sit, I just think, well, choose z axis in this direction. And, and I don't call it now z axis, but I, can, I call it actual uh, uh, component 
uh, of uh, of torque or whatever. Yeah, so this direction, so this is now my z, z, z axis, it's in, in awkward direction. Uh, all right, so the actual component of acceleration of an object rotating about a fixed uh, or instantaneous axis is proportional to the component along the axis of rotation of the net external torque. Uh, so let's, for example, take a look over here. Yeah, if I apply a force here at the rim of this disk at, at an angle like that, which means that torque is in this direction, which, but I have to take just a component <laughs> of this torque in that direction. Now let's figure out actually how we, uh, how, uh, how we calculate, where does it come from? Yeah, so if we take a look at the vector product, why don't we actually think about uh, vector product? Um, so let's say position multiply by the force. Yeah, so this is this gives me torque. Uh, <coughs> what is the Z component of the torque? Z component of this product. Uh, you will have to recall how to multiply vectors using a vector product. Right, so I I mean, this is how I would do I, J, K, X, Y, Z, F, X, F, Y, and F, Z. This is what is the torque, right? So concentrate now on Z component. Z component, it means that uh, whatever stands in front of K. So it, uh, it takes X times F, Y minus y times fx, right? Which means that <coughs> what I have to, to take, I mean, in order to find out the vertical component of the torque, I have to multiply only horizontal components of the force. Do you see that? There is not, uh, no fz over there which means that I have to take, well, a uh, component of the force which is perpendicular to the axis, axis of rotation. Only this component affects the, the torque uh, influencing rotation. Vertical component of the force has no influence on that, on that, uh, on that rotation. And let, let's see, uh, uh, <coughs> can, I, can, I, can you hold that wheel again? What does it really say? If I apply a force at an angle like this, well, it is, I can think uh, that it's a superposition of a force in this direction. Oh, no, no, let's, yeah, okay. Uh, no, at an angle like this, right? So I can think that it's a superposition of a, a force in this direction and downward, and actually in this direction. Right now, let's see what, what affects rotation of the, of the wheel. If I push it that way, do I make it to accelerate? No, right? Now, this way, no, only that way, right? I have to push it down. Only that, only this component affects the, uh, the rotation, thanks. Yes, so over here I have to take only, I mean this actually drawing is not the most general because I should even have it going a little bit forward. So this, this uh, should be not vertical. Do you understand me? Yeah, only the component along the circumference of that wheel affects its uh, acceleration. Uh, All right, now I would like to talk about moment of inertia because this one 
affects uh, how how strong is the effect is the effect of interaction of the, on the motion the same way as mass affects the relationship between motion and 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 interaction yeah the the higher inertia in other words the higher mass that more difficult it was to accelerate the object. Well, in case of uh, rotational motion, moment of inertia describes rotational uh, inertial property of an object. And the higher the moment of inertia, the more difficult it is to start spinning or slowing spin. Uh, and therefore, moment of inertia is a really very important uh, uh, attribute of an object. We have to learn uh, actually, I want you for the test. I want you to memorize uh, a number of moments of inertia of the most common objects. For engineering, you will have to memorize. Def I mean, definitely, you will have to memorize that. Uh, but <coughs> before you memorize th them, I want you also to know how to derive them. So, uh, well, if I have a system of particles. We saw that the moment of inertia about an axis is equal to the product of mass of individual particles times their distance from the axis. This r prime i refers to the distance. So if I take a, a, a particle somewhere over here, uh, r prime is how far that particle is from the axis, not how far it is from the origin. Uh, so this is significance. Do not rec um, forget significance of this prime. Prime means distance from the axis. Without prime, it would mean distance from the uh, from the origin. Well, now if the object is complicated, like me, for example, which has zillions of particles, calculating that way is uh, complicated. It's better to do what? We have already used this trick in, uh, many times. Divide object into small pieces. Each, each tiny piece now will have a lot of particles, but still can be considered as a particle. So if we divide this object into differential pieces, and then for each piece we calculate product of mass of this piece and the distance from the axis, and add them, we will get moment of inertia. So that process, that type of addition is referred to as how do yeah how we have to integrate it correct so if a body is continuous we divide into pieces and we integrate now remember that we have to integrate again using distance from the axis about which we calculate the moment of inertia why don't we take a look at an example so uh, I want now to derive an expression for moment of inertia of a uniform thin rod. Uh, let's start with moment of inertia about one end. So I divide now this rod into small pieces. Now let's say that the piece has length dx. So distance, uh, I mean uh, mass of this piece is equal to, is proportional to the size. So it is mass of uh, total mass of the rod divided by length. This gives me linear density of the rod and multiplied by the size of the piece. So really, this is the mass of that red piece. Now that red piece is at location x, so its distance from the axis is just x, and I have to square it. Uh, now we have to answer ourselves those three questions to specify the limits. Can, we rem rem can you remind me those three questions I have forgotten? That we have to, we have to calculate, for, uh, we have to include every piece. We have to include every piece. Good. We have to include every piece only once. And don't count pieces which do not belong to the object. All right. So. Now we have to think what is the smallest x and the highest x for the pieces along this, uh, this uh, object. What is the smallest one? 
zero, correct? So we will integrate, therefore, from zero. And the highest? L, correct. So we are going to integrate from zero to L. Well, the rest is math. This is end of physics. Uh, would you suggest a mathematical uh, theorem to integrate that? Well, uh, why don't we use the first fundamental theorem of calculus? Uh, first, let's pull out whatever is constant. Mass of the object is constant. I can take it in front of the summation. Length of the object is constant. I can take it in front of the summation. I, I will have integral of x squared uh, uh, in limits from 0 to L. And when we use fundamental theorem of calculus, it would be wise to know the indefinite integral of the function. So what's indefinite integral of x squared? x cubed over 3. All right. So it's x cubed over 3 in limits from 0 to L. When I plug in the limits, I will get that it is 1 third mass of the rod multiplied by square of its length. Uh, all right. Why don't we now calculate moment of inertia about an axis passing through the center of the, uh, of the rod? What would, be the di what would be different? So axis is now here. Uh, you can think now, I mean, you can do two things. Uh, one is to express now the distance in terms of still the same, in the same coordinate system. Now I would suggest now to move origin. How about now, I think that this is y axis, so origin is here. What would be different? The limits would be different this time, right? So what would be the limits now? From negative L over 2 to, to positive L over 2, and the same function. So moment of inertia happens to be now, uh, well, calculation is the same, but moment of inertia is different. Uh, <coughs> so depending on this, how actually the uh, particles are, uh, uh, distributed over uh, uh, over axis uh, uh, um, about which we calculate moment of inertia, we will get different moments of inertia. So now, if I if I take the, this piece, this is the rod. Is it? How about if I take it that way? Is it easier to twist it like this? Or like this. Why? I don't believe it. I mean, probably you somehow you have intuition about it. You 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 did you played with these objects. Yes. Yeah, so, but now give me a, a firm argument that indeed it is easier to twist when you hold it here than when you hold it there. Not, no, I mean, this is, this is why I, I took it vertical, yeah, because indeed, if I, if I were doing it like this, then here I would have influence of, of gravity. Right now, gravity actually doesn't affect, yeah, what's, what's the gravitational torque at this configuration? Zero. And in this? Zero. Gravity does not exert a torque. So what? So what? Moment of inertia is affected. Right. This is what is important. Now, moment of inertia, if I hold it that way, look at the, look at the screen. It is four times greater. I have to apply a torque four times stronger when I'm trying to twist it this way than if I, I'm trying to do it that way. Do you see that? Uh, all right. Uh, we'll come back to this subject uh, tomorrow. So um, until then.